Okay, so the market refresh. Now, what I've basically done here is um, any blank space I have replenished from the tile, you know, you know the tier one tile stack. Once that is exhausted, we move on to the tier twos, threes, and the fours. And the way that it's replenished is, and you'll see underneath these tiles, in the middle of it, there's a number. So that's two. This one here is one. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> well, this one is three. <laughs> Lovely job. Uh, so the way that the board works is basically we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And that's the order that the, uh, that the board is replenished. And so the reason I put these on upside down, and this is kind of something that I've kind of picked up <laughs> in a few games that we've played, just makes things more efficient, especially with two players. One person getting the tiles out, putting them upside down. The other person is using these white cubes to show which tiles have already been here for a week. So what happens is any tile that's been here, I'm gonna try and get, zoom out a bit more for a week get a white cube on them. Oops. Alberto Tower does not because he shouldn't be here. He should also be a quiet player. See me. Uh, no what am I doing? Don Monte. Duck Junior. Right, hopefully the market board looks the same as it did. Um, so what the white cube represents basically as I say is you know it's something that's been there for a week. What happens at the end of each market refresh day, every Saturday any empty spaces will be replenished, any tiles with a white cube on them will be removed and replenished. So, you know, basically these white cubes are showing you that we've got one, we've got one more week to try and pick up these tiles, otherwise they are gone. Um, so the rest of these are gonna get flipped around, which I will do, and um, it will look absolutely seamless as we move into Sunday. Okay, we have a nice refreshed board with lots of new players out and a couple of other things. We've got our first new technical, sec um, technical, I can't remember really his name now, secretary. Um, and as you can see, we've now got a one to three available to sell our player, although obviously I only need to ones or twos because I'm a rolling machine, but there we go. And you, um, so yeah, you see how you know, more opportunities are there to uh, force acquire players and also to sell players later on, which I will cover. So uh, that's the end of uh, Saturday. In fact, that's the end of, almost the end of the first week. We move down onto time of soccer. It is time of soccer. Time for soccer, um, and that's when the top pot, top um, top tile in this deck will be played. Obviously, you can see the top one is pre-season. So what this basically means is any friendlies we have, we can play. And the bottom right-hand corner basically shows once it's been played, it is discarded. So that's going to go away. Down here, we're going to play our friendlies. So I'm going to play my friendly, it's away, so I'm not going to pick up a home bonus, but I do pick up $6. So, oops, that's the wrong one. Very good. Now, you'll see this is the first of the tile ones going out of the game. So this is where the having the baggies there, quite handy. Pop that in the baggie. I'm just going to pretend that's going into the baggie. Uh, and that one is gone. And I played my friendly, I pick up my $6. Lovely. Simon's much needed $4. Come in, and again, it's a tier one, it's gone out of the game, and four dollars. Come in. Gosh. And that's week one, I didn't just drop a dollar, did I? No, that's week one of Time of Soccer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of have a funky transition and it's gonna look like I've played, well in fact, because I will have, played um, a few more turns of the second week, now that you kind of understand how the week structure works, and then we'll look at actually playing a few games. So just a couple of housekeeping bits before I actually kind of uh, time lapse. Um, obviously, we move uh, we move both um, white meeples. So I've moved the first meeple onto week one. In fact, I've just knocked him over. Brilliant. And we've moved our other meeple back up to the top. Uh, obviously, at this point, we then uh, reassign or you know give ourselves some more income, which I've literally just done. Um, and then we switch over the first player meeple to the next person. Person on your left. See, with two of us. Swung over there. Um, otherwise, you know, I've, uh, everything's ready to go. So uh, I will, um, I will catch you guys shortly. Okay, we're back. Um, if you have a look at our player board, you'll see that quite a lot's happened in just one turn. That'll be my power. Hang off on again. That's cool. Um, but you'll see that we've got quite a few more players, and Simon is still absolutely woeful in defence, but loving life and attack. 
bit more of a mix from me. I've managed to pick up a left back there, Julio Alberto. Uh, otherwise, still quite attack minded. But if we have a look at the tracks up here, what we'll see is that Simon's managed to get up to a level 2 in attack. So 1 3 4 for his first three successes. So quite nice. Uh, I'm just up here, but I have got myself up to level 1. Um, defensively, Simon's still not looking good. I've managed to sneak up to level minus 1 there. So a little bit more balanced. And Simon's extremes, but um, that's 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 how we look as we head into uh, into our first time time of soccer game proper game week. Um, just also note, just down here in the left hand side, we've actually got our first tier two card tiles come out. So this sponsorship deal now is worth two. Um, we've got Cardenas, maybe a throwback to Sherman Cardenas, one of the old full manager heroes. A plus six in attack there, very nice, but obviously minus two weight and also seven cost and a slightly better manager who gives a bonus to um, triangles and diamonds and if I'm looking at my board I've got quite a few players with triangles on so I'm going to probably attempt to pick him up and explain how he works. Let's play. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come over here onto our Sunday we pick up our first game week tile here and this shows us who's playing who. So obviously yellow and blue are the two player control teams we're going to be playing against, uh, uh, you know, non-human opponents. Uh, the first one's actually a completely non-human affair. So we come over here in game week one and we refer to our um, dice. Obviously, neither team's ahead of the other. It wouldn't matter anyway. It's one die each, simple as that. So home with a white die. So black with a white die. Away, Mahaya with a blue die. Here we go. We'll give him a roll. Wow. Um, not necessarily a six all draw, but a draw. So over here, we then move our, our black and red tiles, give them a point for a draw. And I, I realise that wasn't the greatest roll in the world, but it's uh, quite late. And the missus is in bed. So we're going to do gentle rolls. Um, that's what she said. So we're going to then come back over here and have a look at our tile. Now we can see it's me at home to the purples. I have no idea what are they called. Paranda. Paranda. There we go. So, quite a Spanish vibe, as you'd expect. Well, Spanish game. Um, so, I'm going to be playing again at home to Paranda. Now, the way that this works is uh, the away team are always going to attack first, and they're going to attack with all six dice. Uh, then, the home team will defend with five dice. And then it reverses, so it's almost like two halves. And then in the second half, effectively, the home team will attack with their six dice and the away team will defend with five. So that's how we're gonna get it going. Obviously, we then refer to our, uh, our, our, our level track and we'll look at what happens next. So in a two player game, uh, sorry, in a level two game, you can see in game week one, they are a level zero. So up here, that basically means it's a one for one. One success, or a five, to one, which is a five to six, is one shot, or one shot defended. Uh, if you, if you, um, depending on which side of the ball you're on. So let's grab all six dice, have a little bit of a look around here, and try and direct the camera at the same time. One down there. There's my six dice. So I'm rolling for the opposition here. So well, we could have kept. Well, two successes. So we've got. Two fives, so it's obviously a five or a six is a success. Two successes. So as we know from our chart up here, that basically means they've had two shots. Now I'm defending with five, so I'll exclude the blue dice. Die, sorry. So I basically need to try and my defence level here, as you'll see, is actually a level minus one. So I actually need three successes to be able to stop two shots, as you'll see from the circles there. My first two are only going to end up with one shot stopped. So let's see what happens. Wow, how about that? All of them stopped. So over here, I grab one of these, and on the away team track, I get to put it on the zero. Great bit of roll in there. Uh, I didn't even need to use my re-roll. If you remember earlier, talking about the coach with his re-roll, I might need that on my attack. So, oh, I've got the dice on the floor, I'm gonna get, you know what, I'm gonna go and pick it up, and at the same time, just slight to walk off my table. There we go, because I can't edit it. Not quite advanced. There we go. We now have all six dice back again. So now I'm going to be attacking with all six. 
Wow, not a single success. There's the rolling. So I'm going to use my manager's ability to re-roll over my attack or defense dice to re-roll my attack dice and hopefully actually have a shot. One. <laughs> and on my attack bar up here, one is just one, so I've had one shot. So this looks like it might well end in a stalemate here, but um, let's roll their defensive dice to see if I can roll terribly. That was a terrible idea to roll it on there. Uh, they got one six there, so they defended it. So my first game in my time of soccer playthrough ends in a nil-nil draw. An absolute thriller. Nil-nil draw. So I give myself a point. Uh, there is yellow. And purple get a point as well. Nobody wants to kind of really run away yet. Now the game is finished. A couple of things need to happen before we move on to the second player's turn. And um, the first thing we want to do is refer to our, uh, our, our community manager here. As you can see, uh, a thumbs up for a win would have been two. I gained one fan for getting a draw. So up here, move my track up to one. As I say, when you get to the, when you get to the full one up there, every fifth one effectively is going to give you an extra fan up here and with it a bit more income, which is quite nice. Now that's the first thing that's going to happen. We also want to have a look at any um, home bonuses or win bonuses. Obviously I've got a TV contract which gets me $1 for a win. Uh, for, sorry, for playing at home and $1 for a win. I didn't win, but I pick up a buck for playing at home. So, cheeky little dollar there. Not too shabby. Better than nothing, although I obviously would have preferred a win. Um, so now we're going to move on to uh, our, our second team, Molaruta. And they're going to play their game. They're away to Legatos. I remember them because I've played as them before. Um, so obviously being the away team, they're going to get to attack first. And obviously with their much more advanced attack here, you know, only two successes equals three goals. So they're really looking to kind of get the goals in early and then hold on to your life. So they're going to roll all six. And what do we pick up here? Let's see. Two successes, so three shots. And then they're going to stick with that. They're going to stick with that. One thing I will mention right now is that you can't re-roll uh, the opposition's dice as part of your manager ability. It's just your dice. So three shots. You can always keep track of those shots on here and then kind of you know knock it down as uh, as as they're stopped. But I tend to just try and remember. <laughs> and what have we got here? Just the one success, I think. Probably zoom out a bit, shouldn't I? Oh no, two successes. Uh, oh no, it was only five dice, wasn't it? So just the one success. So, and obviously they're on level one, level zero over here. So they stop one. So it's two goals for the away side. Storming. Now the home side are going to attack. Now the Gartos are going to attack. And wow, they've only had one shot. So we know it's a win. Now you see, you could then roll, uh, I know that Simon would like to keep a clean sheet. I mean, the game's in the bag. Uh, the goal difference, I don't actually think comes into it. So you could stop here and just say, well, that's a win. But Simon Simon wants to get his clean sheet. So he's going to roll for his clean sheet. Again, not particularly great rolling, but it will have to suffice. And he does indeed stop it. So a 2-0 clean sheet victory there. Um, obviously I could also grab a cube. If I move it properly, I should probably use a cube there to show zero for the, zero for the home team. Two goals for the away team. So a 2 0 win for the away team means that Molarusa are flying into the lead in the league. And there we go. They obviously have a look at their community manager, picks them up two lovely fan satisfaction. Oh, move the camera up. Two on the fan satisfaction track. Um, they have picked up a couple of contracts as we've gone along, and they both give win bonuses. He was confident with his uh, mad attack, so he's picked up two dollars there. On the monk. So he's, also, he's looking a little bit healthier financially. And there we go. So the next thing that we do is we flip this tile over to show that it's now on the return leg. You see, you've got the same game, just in reverse order. And this goes to the bottom of that bar there. Back on its spot, ready for game week number two. We then move back, move our tracks. So we move up to week two on this track. Move back up here to our Monday on this track, and we're ready to go again. And that time of soccer. Um, what I will do as a kind of final little edit after the after the break is I will just grab 
all of the tiles, because I know this kind of needs to be a little bit of a, uh, of a rules run through as much as actually gameplay. Um, I will grab all of the other tiles within these piles here and then a quick little run through of how they work, what they do, and as well as some of the connections for the players on the boards as well, because that's quite important. So I'll, I'll update you boards a little bit and I'll come back and run through those. Okay, here we go. Uh, the last part of the video, uh, uh, I'm going to kind of run you through how a, yeah, a completed team may well look. Now, this isn't the kind of the best, uh, this is quite a hastily put together team, but it, it's a good chance to kind of show how connections work and a few other things. And I'll show you, you know, what kind of scores we're looking at with a with a fairly basic team like this. I mean, they've got a few players who are worth eight. We've got uh, Pontacion, uh, Rocinante over there, Damien up top. Uh, we've also got some cheapos as well. So, you know, oh, we've got Kasuko there and Eleven Costa. Quite a beastly little player there. Um, so, yeah, we've got a few decent players in here, but I've still got my starting goalkeeper. Um, so, you know, this is a team that, you know, you, you probably, you should be beaten by the end of the game, let's be honest. Um, you know, ignore the salary, it's probably wrong. I've just kind of, um, I'm just trying to show how, how the connections work. First thing to mention is the only other tile I don't think we've actually come across yet. Well, I mean, no, no, no we'll scrap that. Let's cut that. Let's let's work out how this team is put together. So obviously the first thing to note is that we've got no blank we've got no blank spaces now. So you know we haven't got any minus two. So if we're going to have a look at our defence, which is obviously our back four here of Pontahacion, Alberto Tower, great name, Kasuko, Ben Mac, and our cheapo goalkeeper Palmeiras FC. Um, let's work it out. So we're starting from zero effectively. But we're looking at Pontahacion, you can see that his primary score is going to be this one here. He's playing at left back. He's got his plus next to it. His plus five. He's also got his hexagon with a plus two. So he's giving us seven there. You could also, you know, you, you know that's um, that's what he's going to be scoring us at there. So a nice plus seven to start with in our defence. We're going to move over to Alberto Tower now. Just a one on his defence. Obviously, you'll see here as a centre back, he's going to get that there. But he's also, again, he's got his hexagon. So he's giving us plus two. So it's a plus three. So we're looking at ten so far for our two defenders. Moving over to Kasuko. He's a bit of a beast. He hasn't got his hexagon bonus, but he has got a straight up nine. So that's moving us up to 19. And he's also got our first connection. If you look at the player above him, Javier Lozano, they're both connected along this line here by triangles. Now what that means on a, on a, on a blank line like this is that's a plus one bonus to both players. So what we're at, we're at 19. Kasuko picks up the extra one there, moves, him up to, moves us up to 20 for our defense over to Ben Mac. He hasn't got any connections. He hasn't got anything. In fact, if you have a look at it, the only reason I picked him is because he's literally a zero player. He has got zeros all around, but he can play anywhere across the back line. He's gonna, gonna get, He's going to negate your minus two. He's cheap, he's only three, and he's versatile anywhere on the back line. Quick little fix, get rid of that minus two, maybe push yourself up a level. So still at 20, and then our little Palomeris FC for a plus one. So 21 for our defence with, as you can see, you know, three cheapo players, a couple of decent players uh, and those connections there to give us that extra bonus. It's up to 21. So if I move my tile up here, which I haven't moved yet, up 21 from minus three, what's that going to be, 18? So now we're around to level three and now we're looking at two, three, four, six, seven, nine depending on your on your successes shots stopped quite nice again as i say from a pretty cheapo back line that you should really be able to pick up um bearing in mind that some of these players are probably level threes um but very early at level three you should be looking at before that with your tier twos really moving on to our attack let's start from the front and work backwards so we've got damien up here now damien has got uh, a, a default plus six up here hasn't got a square connecting uh, but he has got lots of other connections and we're going to have a look at these other connections so his connection to the left there's no connection with with julio alberto he hasn't got a triangle there so we're not going to be able to add a, add a bonus in there but he has got a lovely diamond connection with rocanante not only has he got a diamond connection but he's got a diamond connection along one of the primary um you know diamond connections it's actually got a plus three what that means is that they're both going to get a plus three to their score so whereas down here we had Kasuko and Javier Lozano connected along a blank line. You know, here we've actually got our, you know, this is to represent the kind of, you know, the um, assist maker and the assist receiver. You know, very good at receiving good passes and Rocco Nanti very good at giving those passes. So a plus three bonus to his six, that's a nine pointer right there. 
let's have a look at Gelatau. Cheap old striker. He hasn't got his connection. He has got a diamond, but Lozano hasn't. So just the plus two there. So we're gonna look, we're gonna be looking at a nine plus a two. We're looking at eleven for our attack so far. So not too shabby. Over to John Utah, I have a cheap player on the right, but he's got plus two. So not in the world. Up to thirteen now. Lozano. So he's obviously gonna pick up his plus three for his connection with Gelatau. That's gonna bring us up to fourteen. No. Fifth uh, I've lost count already. This is the way you should probably keep track as you go along. And people are probably getting um, shouting at me with a number. So that's nine, plus a two is eleven, plus a two there is thirteen, plus another plus another three here is sixteen, plus he's one for seventeen. Over to Rock and Ante. He's plus three, up to twenty, plus his default six. That gives us twenty-six. He's also, as you'll see, got a connection with uh, Javier Lozano with the triangles. So another two points there. So 27, 28 there. And then over to Julio Alberto. He hasn't got any connections anywhere, but he's a plus three there. So that's going to give us 30. So my attack value of 30 over here. We're going to, we're going to in fact, yeah, that's what I should have done. That was 21, wasn't it? And that's 30. So yeah. That, was, that makes more sense. Two, three, five, seven, eight, ten on my defence, and two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Up to twelve shots now with my attack, as it's currently looking there with my score as it is. So pretty nice. That's not the end. That is not the end because I picked up Buonero. So we haven't, I haven't really gone into coaches yet. Um, so well, the way that coaches work is that you can have up to three coaches on the left-hand side of your board there, you can see the three cones. Your top one is always going to be your principal manager, so your top one is going to be the one, the formation you're going to use. So I'm using the, the standard five defenders, six attackers. If I was to put Buonera at the top of the board, all of a sudden my left midfielder becomes part of my defence. If you've got a really strong quarter of your attack and you want to get that extra player on the defensive side of things, you can flip it round and you can tweak your formations to, the, to your lineup. Uh, quite quite a realistic little thing. I like that a lot. Um, he also gives a training bonus, and he gives a plus one. God, these lights are going to Plus one to any triangles in my team. And you may recall I've got a lot of triangles. He also gives plus two to any diamonds. So the scoring is about to go off the roof. So all of a sudden, if I move over to my defence here, you'll see that Ben Mack over on the right hand side all of a sudden becomes worth two points. Oh, these lights are an absolute nightmare worth two points. So he's gonna get me an extra two on my defense. Kasuko, an extra one, that's three. Alberto Tower, that's four. So that's four extra points to my defense, not too shabby. I'm gonna move him up over here, up to 25, onto the next level. Lovely job. And then my attack. Let's have a look at this. Obviously, bear in mind, we get a plus two bonus. Julio Alberto becomes huge now with Buonera because I get a plus two bonus for my diamonds. So he's worth an extra four. Rocanante. Six, seven, eight. Paolo Lozano, nine, ten. Johnny Utah, eleven. Get a town, twelve, thirteen. Damien, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen extra points on my attack from that coach. Fifteen extra points. So all of a sudden, that goes right the way around to forty-five. But I'll flip the camera around and cover it up at the same time, so I can show you. Three, five, seven, ten, twelve, fifteen shots. Wow. That's big. And all of that from, you know, an eight cost level two manager. So you can kind of see where a lot of maths gets involved, a load of maths gets involved. Really maths a game. You, need to, you might need to go back and recalculate sometimes, especially if you made a formation tweak. You might just have to go, right, you know what, I'm going to go back to zero and just start from there. Um, but, you know, really quite, really quite thematic. You know, getting these extra coaches in to give you boost, give certain positions boost, to, to tweak your lineup, to kind of go more defensive or more offensive without having to actually mess around with how your board is shaped. Really nice little mechanic, that. Um, I think the only tile that we haven't covered on top of these is the coaches. Uh, the only two tiles we haven't covered, actually. One of them is press conferences. So I've managed to pick up a, pre a press conference here. And so what this press conference is basically saying is, I will win or I will draw this week. Yeah, that's right, I'm going bold. I will win or draw this week. And um, there are a bunch to choose from. They're actually, these are actually relatively well explained in the manual. And if it succeeds, plus one on your victory points. Yeah, not too bad, keep that to one side. You lose it, you lose $2. That's how press conferences work. So I won't kind of go into too many, uh, too many of them, but you know, I've got another one here. That's a straight up win. So you're being a little bit more bold. 
So it's going to give you two victory points, or you might lose a fan if it doesn't come in. You know, bold claims there in your press conferences. So there's a bunch of those. Some of them refer to winning the cup, winning the league. You know, at the end of the season, maybe you think you might need a little boost, and you think you're going to win the league. It might be worth with taking a risk on. Um, and finally, the other tile that comes out on the board, the transfer, the, the sell player tile. So you move into this as normal. The way that the sell player tile works is that it doesn't get removed after it's used. It still gets removed after two weeks. It will still get a white tile, a white cube on it after the first week, but it stays there for the two weeks regardless. And the way this works, we come back to our um, our technical director, and you'll see that I've actually picked up a better one, Cristobal, who gives me a, a five and out of six chance of uh, acquiring a player. He gets used again for transfers, slightly differently, in that you don't actually refer to the dollar amount, you just need to hit a dice roll that has a dollar amount against it. So I just need a one to five. If I roll a one to five, my, trans my sale succeeds. Nothing happens with the numbers on there. I don't have to pay any money. I don't receive any bonus money, according to my technical director. It just means it succeeds. He's successfully negotiated the transfer. So over here, we'll see. I've got Palmeiras FC, my, my default right or left midfield is still here. He's worth $2. If I manage to sell him successfully, he'll get $2 plus a $3 bonus. So $5 I'd pick up for selling him. Quite handy later in the game. And you'd also pick up your salary back as well. That salary is still going to be on my books, even if he's not in my team. I pick up that extra dollar um, for, uh, you know, the extra dollar of income on my income track. And at the same time, pick up five bucks for a, for a default starting player. Quite nice little, uh, little acquisition there. Um, and I think that just about covers uh, covers all of the tiles, you know. Um, there, That should give you enough, hopefully, an idea of, of how time of soccer works. So... Um, I think that kind of covers everything and I'm going to try and stitch this video together as best as I can. Obviously if anybody's got any questions feel free to shoot them at me. Um, but hopefully that gives you a pretty good overview of how Time of Soccer works. The, the, the scoring is pretty well covered in the, uh, in the manual, how, how, you score, you know, how you score at the end of the game. Um, yeah, that's it. Cheers!